Today we have MSI's X79A GD65 motherboard. This is of course an X79 motherboard and it's from MSI, it used to be MicroStar International. Taking a look at the box, we'll also look at the design of the, uh, the board itself, some of the component specifications, component choices, as well as design choices that went into this product. One of the first things that we noticed after we got this box out of its uh, shipping container was that in the U.S. at least, MSI is now a Better Business Bureau accredited business. This is kind of good news in that if you're in the U.S. and you have a problem with MSI, you can actually report this and there's some tracking and follow-up. It's an indication that MSI is taking serious their customer concerns and complaints and that they're willing to put themselves out, out there to address those. Um, another thing that we noticed, the big push for, the, uh, for MSI has always been their military class. Here we look at the third generation of their military class components. This is MSI's way of saying that the, the parts that they purchase to put into their products meet military specification. Now that could be a good thing or a bad thing. Well, we all know that sometimes the military gets very good equipment, very stable, very sturdy, long lasting equipment, but in some cases it's also bought by the lowest bidder. Our hope is that MSI here has chosen the best balance of the best price and best performance and also stability. Uh, they do offer a three year warranty. It's a, of course, you know, as with everything, it's a limited warranty. We also see on the front that you have PCI Express Generation 3. This board is actually ready for that when uh, Ivy Bridge E comes out, which is right now is looking to be either in the very, very late half of uh, 2012 or early 2013. So for right now, even though it's beneficial and you do get a small performance benefit out of it if you're running a, an AMD 7 series card, it's not going to be that big of an impact or that big of a motivator for a purchasing decision. The performance benefit is only between 9 to 12%. So let's take a look at the back of the box now, and we see that it's a little bit more cluttered. You have more information here. We get into some of the details of things, such as Dr. Moss, the high C capacitors, as well as that they're using solid capacitors, they're super ferrite chokes, and just a few other items that they pack into this board that are listed as features. Um, THX Studio Pro, that's going to give you a little bit higher quality audio for multimedia content. It can also be a benefit to games. Not everything is THX certified or has THX coding into it, so it's not going to be a benefit across the board. It's just a little bit higher quality of sound certification. Opening up the box, we see that you got a uh, nice overclocking guide, a certificate of quality and stability, which is always nice to have. There's a quick reference poster. Uh, these are kind of fun, but uh, I know most people don't use them. You have a driver CD, another quick installation guide, the usual manual. Uh, these are your quick connectors, of course your I.O. shield, the now standard multiple SATA cables. And of course MSI has also been nice with uh, including options for so, uh, using eSATA directly on the back plane without needing to run anything extra. You even have an extra power cord if you want to just use this straight with a standard SATA. Uh, SATA drive. And then we also have a USB 3.0 backplane that runs off of a USB 3.0 header directly on the board. That's a, definitely a nice uh, touch. And then another guide here which gives you more information about the uh, quality. Underneath all of that and of course the thing that you actually came for is going to be the board. So we'll get this out of its uh, anti-static bag here and we will take a look at the board and what kind of features and components you can expect. Alright, so now we have the X79A GD65 8D. That's a mouthful, try and say that five times fast. Out of the box and we're going to take a look at the features. Now the overall look of the board, it looks a little almost plasticky. Um, the choice of the blues and the blacks, while the blue is not that bad of a color, it gives it an odd look to it that's uh, in, in some cases from what we've seen from our input from other people just kind of gives it a little bit of a not necessarily a high quality look to it however it doesn't the look of the board actually doesn't take away the, from the performance we do notice that MSI has now gone with uh, the sort of the one arm jack boards here are for RAM in other words you only have to unlock something on one side and then the other side just has a friction lock that's going to keep your memory in there that's good for if you, uh, especially with the clearance that you have between the first PCIe slot and the memory. There's not a lot of clearance. You're not going to be able to get your finger in there to, to open and close the lock if you want to place or add RAM in there once you get the board set up. Another thing about the overall look of the board is that it has something of a transformer-ish look to it. Uh, 
If you take a look at the heat sinks, they do look very similar to the logos that you would have for, uh, you know, in the Transformer movies, the Autobots and the Decepticons. It doesn't take away from the look, sort of adds something to it. We've seen this with other manufacturers. Gigabyte did this on their older X58 series, as well as their 8800 series from AMD. It gave it a nice racing feel to it. It wasn't the same, you know, Transformer look here. But taking a look further at the board, of course, you do have the full eight banks of RAM. Uh, you have a sticker over top of your plastic cover which protects the pins in your LGA socket. Unfortunately when we pulled that off it did remove the, the plastic cap so be careful of that if you buy one of these retail. And then we have another sticker covering up our PCI Express slots. Taking a look at the peripheral slots what you'll notice is that there are different types of hold down clamps for the, uh, the cards that go in here. That's because each one of these is actually a little different. The three that you see that have your press down slots those are actually going to be PCIe generation 3 and then these two are going to be PCIe Generation 2. So you can actually segment those. If you want to run a Generation 2 card, you're going to put it obviously in either slots 2 or 5. If you want to run one of your Generation 3 cards, you're going to put it in one of these three. That's going to help separate it. There's no need to go in the BIOS and adjust settings to change it. Although we don't see why you wouldn't have that feature in there. I know on some other boards, ASUS in particular, they actually add the option to turn it on or turn it off or to switch the generation that the slot is going to operate at. Now some people say that these are not going to work until you have Ivy Bridge in here. However, uh, PLX does make a switch and a bridge as well that will allow these to function with your current Sandy Bridge E processor. So you can get a Generation 3 like functionality out of it, but you're not going to get the full functionality until we see Ivy Bridge hit the market. So moving around, we notice that the, there are, is additional power down here. It's going to be a standard 4-pin Molex connector. Along the bottom you have your overclocking buttons, a plus and a minus right down here along the bottom edge of the board, as well as your reset and power buttons are going to be down here. These are, these are solid, but again, they just look a little plasticky and, and give it a sort of a gimmick feel instead of that solid feel like it's a, a purposely built component. You also have your <clears throat> USB 3.0 header, your front panel header, you have a set of diagnostic LEDs on, on this side down here. They're very small, but then again, they don't need to be that large as they're only providing a, a limited function here. Now another thing you'll see, uh, MSI has an implemented something similar to what we've seen on the ASUS boards and that's going to be their SSD caching. <clears throat> you can plug an SSD uh, into this slot here as well as a standard um, SATA 3 drive and it's going to give you sort of a caching benefit that will give you some performance boost. It's not going to be that great of a boost so far in our testing we haven't seen that big of a jump but uh, we assume that uh, you know we'll see things change as of course the SATA 3, newer SATA 3 drives come out they get faster and of course they get larger. Moving around one of the thing, other things we want to take a look at here is the 8 pin auxiliary slot. It's in a probably one of the better positions that we've seen. Normally when, when this slot is put on it's so difficult to get to that we recommend that you get an extension cord. We still recommend you get an extension cord to use with this. However, it's still much better and you actually have a much better clearance to plug this in after this case has been or after this board has been put into a case. The last thing we're going to take a look at here is going to be the the IO shield. You have a PS2 which for many people that's uh, old and outdated you're not going to see many people using that but for those of you that do have PS2 devices you can still use that. You also have two USB ports directly underneath it. You still have coaxial and optical spit-if on this and you also have Firewire which uh, MSI has had in a lot of their boards. Several different uh, USB options, USB 3.0, of course your LAN slot and then your 8 channel audio. Well that about wraps it up for the MSI X79A GD658D as far as the features and what we can see on the board. The last thing we really want to cover here is going to be component selection. Now MSI has talked a lot about the components that they put on the board and their, uh, how much better they are than their competition. To a certain degree they're correct. Um, their ferrite chokes that they have, you'll see these uh, spaced around the board, they're labeled with an SFC. They have a little bit uh, better material, so they're a little bit denser, and these chokes are going to work better with your higher voltages. The same thing, their, uh, their high C caps, they're designed to actually, as they heat, they become plastic, and that they can break and actually reform their shape. They're not as, as uh, solid as some of the other capacitors when they're under heat and under pressure, so it allows them to be a little bit more malleable, and they're less likely to break under stress. Um, these components do cost a little bit extra and in some cases they can create additional heat in the area 
but they are a good design choice and they're a, particularly a good one for MSI. Um, MSI has been working to rebuild their credibility. Uh, MSI was one of the first motherboards that actually worked well with the original slot A Athlons and since that time they expanded, they had really good functional boards and then not too long ago they sort of had a little bit of a falling out. They are rebuilding that and we've seen some impressive products from them and we hope that this one actually falls into that category and, so, and we'll find that out once we put it up on the test bench and we start running it through its paces.